Hey, welcome back to Cash Canada. I'm London Westy. Lyric Glass is behind the other camera filming me. And this is What's Up Wednesday, a new feature for us. And today, as we're sailing back to Fort Lauderdale on our cruise, we're talking to a reviewer. Hi, um, my real name is Colin Semple. I live down in St. Catharines, Ontario, which is very close to Niagara Falls. Been reviewing for ooh, over 11 years now across the province. I know, a long time. 11 years. Started uh, geocaching back in 2001, believe it or not. Um, just I saw a show on, on the Discovery Network and I uh, said, you know what, I, that's something that will get me back out in the woods, which I used to love doing as a cadet, and I uh, saw the orienteering aspect of uh, the GPS game and thought, this sounds like a lot of fun, let's, let's give it a shot. So uh, I did, and fortunately my very first cache find was Ontario's first geocache, Deerbait GC2B4. Uh, located in Short Hills Provincial Park. How many, okay, when you, when you found that one, when did you find it? Uh, it was actually, I believe, May of the following year, 2002. So year. How many geocaches were around that at that time? <laughs> that's a funny, yeah, that's a really funny point. Because um, now there's a lot. There's, there's tons, There's yeah. tons. And uh, in fact, uh, from my house, it was actually the closest one at five kilometers away. Um, and you know how when you look on your screen and it shows you the closest 20? Yeah. Uh, the 20th one was actually in Milton, Ontario, some 75 kilometers away. <laughs> I noticed about uh, 10 years ago that deer bait didn't even show up on my closest 20 anymore because there's just that many around my house. Yeah, we, we found that one, but years and years later, I don't think we found it maybe three years ago. So uh, that was on our, that was when we started doing oldies. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, are you, do you, as a geocacher, do you have certain targets? Absolutely. Oldest in province or state is, is yeah. top of my list. Um, yeah. I'm also trying to get all the webcams, much like uh, as you are. I'm <laughs> desperately and failing to catch up to your number. Yeah. It's amazing, uh, you know how is I just cannot, you know, close that gap on you. 53. It's not high. There are. I, I don't know who has the highest. It's something like 200 or 250. It's, it, it is the big number out there, but you know what? You're you're setting the pace for me, and I'm just nipping at your heels. So. Awesome. Oh, oh that's pretty cool. <laughs> There's something to look forward to. Okay, how many webcams can I keep getting to keep ahead of you? But you know, I got to go so far now to, to get to them keep because pushing yeah. the envelope. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, what's your favorite type of cache? Uh, actually, surprisingly, my favorite type of cache is is a multi cache. Really? Yeah, I don't think I think that one is really gets under underappreciated by the community. It, it does. Why do you think that is? I think people, there's a lot of little reasons. Uh, I think it's mostly uh, they don't know how far they're going to have to go, how many steps they're going to have to go through, um, how complicated each stop will be. Because, and I, not to be nitpicky, but you know, that is actually one of the, the downsides of, of multi cache is that you don't get indications for each stage yes. what the difficulty in terrain is going to be, or the size, or whatever. You, you do get uh, physical or virtual, but there needs to be a little bit more description for each one, so, so that you know what one each one is. As a reviewer, then, or as a as a cash owner, when you're setting up a multi, would it not be helpful to uh, say, you know, this is a five stage multi, or is it, or is it better just to leave it? You don't know how many stages. I I think there's a place for both. Uh, I do think it, it's in everyone's best interest if people know ahead of time it's like that this multi will take you no more than an hour or you know you will need to use a car for this one. Um, yeah. I think there's a benefit to that but mostly when I write up my multis if uh, you were to look at my account the Blue Quasar you'll see that pretty much every additional waypoint I, I kind of give an indication as to yeah. what to expect at each stop so that way you're not caught blind. And that, that's a good point that you can put in uh, indication like how long is this going to take you? This is going to take you five minutes, and without giving away that it might be a three-stage uh, multi, or you'll have to use multiple means of transportation. That's a good point. Yeah, something for you guys to keep an eye on when you're writing up a multi, uh, what to include, maybe what not to include. Um, what is your least favorite type of cash as a cash owner or a cash searcher? It's funny because for quite a while I was kind of not thrilled with virtuals because we did have an, quite a few, let's just say, lame virtuals. Um, but there's a lot of lame traditionals and it really comes down to, you know, finding something that, that you like. Uh, right now I'd have to say if I was going to pick a least favorite, it would have to be the where I go. 
and that would only be because it's it's underutilized from a simplicity point of view. Like, I don't find people put a lot of effort and detail into cartridge creation to be an expansive universe kind of. It, it, it's just kind of a, a new way to present a puzzle or answer a question. Yeah. A different way of doing a multi. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I, I liked some of the earlier ones, like where you had to actually do activities within the cartridge, pick up something, take it somewhere else. Yeah. In fact, there was one out in, I believe it was Nova Scotia that we did that was just fantastic because you had to go meet a wizard and then as you were going across, oh, I don't want to give anything away. Um, <laughs> there were certain tasks that you did and, and certain roadblocks would get thrown up that you weren't expecting. It's like, oh, I didn't know that was gonna happen. So you had to go back and start a little bit over again. But that actually added to it because you're like, oh, that was such a cool inclusion that I never thought of that. So you are one of three. Uh, for, uh, you are one of three of the reviewers of Ontario, and uh, who are the other two? Uh, the other two would be uh, Tony uh, Cashminder. He's uh, his player name is Hard Oiler. That lives yeah. out in the Petrolia area, out uh, Sarnia Windsor Way. And then uh, after him was uh, Roy, who is uh, RCA seven seven seven, lives up in the Newmarket area. But I also would like to give a bit of a shout out to Sandra in, in Ottawa, our Geocache um, GeoAware CA takes care of all the earth caches in Ontario as well. From time to time, Allison, cache viewer, who used to review in Ontario, also gets to step in and, and help when, when we need to. And we always rely on, on her as well if we have you know questions where the three of us are kind of on the fence. We go, hey, Allison, remember? And we bring her back in to get her feedback. That's something I didn't know and I learned from this cruise was that well, we, there were uh, six reviewers, but mm -hmm. Allison is in Ontario, but she's reviewing for uh, Nova Scotia. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. And then uh, GeoWare, we actually met her at the uh, Giga, and you can see that in the video that we I was so thrilled to meet her because I've had uh, dealings with her putting a, an earth cache together, and it was really fun to do the back and forth to get that done. And earth cache is not easy, and, and it shouldn't be. It, yeah. it should be a very technically based, and you should get all your stuff together for that. And I really enjoyed doing that. And that nice to meet her. It was and, awesome. and the other thing about Sandra is, is that you know not only is she hyper intelligent, like she is an extremely smart person but she she's friendly she has a great sense of humor that that goes along so she, she's not like you know the arrogant kind of uh, I, I really know uh, no she's a great person to deal with yeah. and, um, that is a good lead in <laughs> Uh, one question we've we've talked and, and Colin and I have had a relationship um, you know we meet each other every now and then we chat Absolutely. occasionally um, as I got to know that that the reviewer was not an unknown person on the other side of that uh, mechanism that is a real person and how have you guys dealt with the fact that you're dealing with people that will give you pushback and, and angst and they're, they're frustrated so. it's it's definitely been a learning curve for for many of us um, I tend to be a very by the book um, in fact even when I play Monopoly <laughs> when I play Monopoly you do not put money in free parking that is just not in the rules so you don't do that I'm very much follow the rules as much as possible but on the other hand I also try to employ the uh, the, the, the fun clause is that you know is it really gonna hurt anything can can we let this slide a little bit because it sounds really fun and geocaching at its at its core is supposed to be a fun activity for people to do and I certainly want to encourage that as much as possible sometimes because people put a lot of effort into a geocache from time to time or often and sometimes when we give feedback it does get received as I'm calling your baby ugly and that certainly is not what's intended. I think we've all learned through the internet and, and social media and whatnot that text is not exactly easy to interpret tone and emotion from. And you know, I, I've even read back over some of my earlier logs from like the first five years and I go, wow, what a jerk I was. Like I just didn't word myself very well. I'd like to think I've gotten better, but there are still times, sometimes where tough love is needed where you kind of have to just put your foot down and say, Look, I've given you a couple of shots at this, and I'm sorry, but it's just not working. You're going to have to take it one step above me. Um, that's something I've had to deal with. Is is uh, you have to remember, take a breath before you hit send and anything, but try not to be too hard on either the reviewer or uh, the cash owner when you're sending that log. You know, try to think of how you would feel when you're getting that, and I, and I hope that. I mean, Colin and I have had uh, we've been pushed in back and forth. 
forth to each other. And, you know, I think he's helped me learn, and I, and I really appreciated that. And thank you. Oh, no problem. I mean, I've had similar uh, cases with uh, tequila, was uh, and not the drink, the, the yeah. geocacher tequila. He and I have had uh, uh, had our, our share of back and forths, but now we, we've come to understand each other and have a mutual admiration. Um, Jeff May, uh, who also does another vlogging channel, Cash the Line. Yeah. yeah, he and I have had several kinds of pushing back and forth, and it's just a matter of you know we have a very similar personality, although he is way smarter than I am. Um, but just getting to understand where the other person is coming from, it, it, but it's so enriching to be able to get to that point and and overcome. Now I know how to interact with that person and make the puzzle pieces fit together properly. I think my biggest challenge as a cash owner was uh, when I started to do challenge caches. You know, no pun intended, but that was uh, difficult for me but to you uh, and, and cash uh, uh, shadow as reviewers yes. to, to go through that process. But it, that helped uh, realize the rules or the guidelines, should we say, for geocaching and, and that's been a good experience. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's nice that we finally we have a, a good. I think I could put a, a challenge out there now, and it could be pretty quick. And the last challenge I did was done. done. So. There have been huge improvements, definitely in the the, the challenge cache area um, implementation. Was a little shaky. Um, a lot of people wanted it to be a, its own icon, and uh, something I actually supported. And um, I, I do see that you know challenge caches have their place and uh, I think Ontario um, Ontario is unique in, in that we have a, a high promise of, of geocaching especially in the Golden Horseshoe area and, and the Ottawa areas um. yeah Ottawa has a big hub over there. the Golden Horseshoe uh, we have probably what a lot of people would say the most prolific geocacher and he has produced one quarter of the challenge caches in Ontario himself absolutely you know and and to speak to that, I mean, a lot of his are self-created. Uh, a lot of them are ones he's emulated from other areas, but uh, he's always you know, brought forth good challenges. Um, some were rather struggling to, to get through the review process, and one of my favorite ones, that owner and I went back and forth over one of his ideas many times, and I kept saying, it's not possible, you can't do it, nobody's gonna be able to do it. And then even myself, I did it in four days. And it's like, I, I was clearly, you know, wrong on that one it's like you know yeah it's easily attainable I just but at the same time it does kind of some challenges do kind of cater to just that that kind of one percent or that small niche of the community or sometimes I'm accused of calling them elitists um, yeah. but there's something for everybody because I mean like one percent of the community might be scuba divers I have no interest in scuba diving so I was like you know meh, I can't solve complicated puzzles uh, a challenge cache for most people most caches is not for a new cacher. It just when they look at, oh, I'll never be able to attain that. And I said that to um, the, the Carney Challenge Trail in Brantford. There's no way I'm ever going to get those. And I looked at it two years later. Hey, wait a minute! I've got most of these. Yeah. Uh, and the Cat Trail, yeah. uh, where Peter Verdon, wherever that is. Yeah, the it's up Bolton or yeah. something like that. I said, Wow, I've got these now. Let's go. And then they get archived. <laughs> and I'm like, Pardon. Anyway, um, before we go, we're running a little long here. I, your shirt, you wore a pretty cool shirt. Today. Thanks. Says, Don't forget to be awesome. That, you know, I, that's what I think everybody should be bringing to everything in life is just you know try to bring the fun side of stuff and do as as good of a thing as you can. Um, I, I believe in you know being genuine and uh, and promoting others to be genuine. Thank you very much. For My pleasure. Us. Thanks for having me on. I'll come back again sometime for. Uh, Oh, what's up Wednesday? Hey, where will geocaching take you? Hope you'll join us again for another uh, One Minute Wednesday or a What's Up Wednesday. You never know what will happen store here on Cache Canada. Come back and see us. Thanks. Yeah.